Hi guys, we're going to have a look at a couple of interesting questions here uh, to revise the the area of probability known as discrete random variables. And these uh, two questions which you've got here are very typical kinds of questions you might get in an assessment or examination situation. So let's go and have a look at them. Now, okay, for this question you have a look and I want you to, before I show you how to do it, I want you to pause the video and have a go at it yourself. Please do that because then you'll get maximum benefit out of this video. See you soon. Okay, you're back. All right, you've had a go at this. It's about a biased die which Sarah has in her possession and when it's rolled the probability of obtaining a particular outcome x, the outcome x is the value shown on the die and this is shown in the following table. x can have any value from 1 to 6 inclusive as you'd be aware for a die, six-sided die, and the probability of getting each of those outcomes is as follows. And P is an unknown, so we have to work out the value of P first up. Well, how did you do that? Well, P um, would be 1 minus the sum of all these because the whole lot of them have to add up to 1. So that's pretty straightforward. So if you work it all out, P would have to come to point 1. All right? Excellent. Now, uh, next part here, the expected value of X. Well, that's worked out by multiplying each respective value of X by its probability or its likelihood of occurring, okay, and that's that there, and then when you basically just simplify all that, uh, you'll get that, uh, and we add all those up together and you get 3.3, .3. that is the average, that is the mean, that is the expected value of x, alright, great, so that's um, part 1 and part 2 done, now part 3, the standard deviation of x, hmm, how do you do that? Well, there's a terrific little formula that you need to know uh, about. And that is, first of all, we work out the expected value of x squared. And from that, we subtract the expected value of x all squared. So this here, this line here, has been uh, computed by squaring the respective values of x and then multiplying them by their respective probabilities which comes to that, which comes to that, which comes to that. And then we work out uh, e of x squared, as I said, minus e of x all squared, which comes to 12.9, this figure here, minus the one we worked out on the previous screen for the average, the expected value of x all squared, which comes to that. Now, that is the variance. That is the variance, guys, 2.01. And to get the standard deviation, we take the square root of that, which gets us 1.418 to three decimal places, and that is the standard deviation of x. The standard deviation, incidentally, means the average deviation from the mean. Okay? Now, we better do part four now. The probability that x is going to be greater than the mean, or the expected value. Okay? Well, that means, uh, in our situation, the probability that x will be greater than 3.3, .3, because 3.3 .3 was the mean. So values of x which are greater than 3.3 .3 are 4, 5 and 6. So we're talking about the probability that x could be this or this or this, which I think you'll agree is 0.2 plus 0.1 plus 0.1, which would get us 0.4. Good show. How did you go? Did you get it right? Well, that's great if you did. If you didn't, just go back and have another look and revise and you'll be fine. This time... Uh, she's got a, she's got two fair dice, as well as the biased one, which was described above. So she's got three in total, two fair ones, and the biased one, which we've just been dealing with. She puts all three of them in a bag, and then she asks her friend to select a die and to roll it. What is the probability that the die will show a six? And secondly, what is the probability that if the die did show a six, it came from the biased die. Okay? Pause the video. I'll see you soon. Okay. How did you go? Did you find it easy? Did you find it hard? Well, these things are always a little bit knotty. You've got to really think them through and make sure you're thinking logically and find a systematic way of doing them. Finding a systematic game plan is about 90% of the problem with these things. Okay. Well, this is how I did it, guys. Uh, part one. 
what is the probability that the die will show a 6? Well, I always think when in doubt, uh, try a, a tree diagram, which I did. So, the first event of my tree diagram would be throwing, would be choosing, I mean, choosing uh, the die out of the bag. Okay, and there's exactly one third chance of getting uh, the first fair one, another third of getting the second fair one, and one third of getting the biased one. Now, okay, so we build on that event there, and we then, uh, the second event is uh, the result that we get. Either you get a six or you don't get a six. For a fair die, it's going to be one sixth chance of getting a sixth six, and a five sixth chance of not getting one. However, for the biased die, remember, we found that P was 0.1, wasn't it? And that was the value associated with a 6. So it's a 1 tenth chance of getting a 6 and a 9 tenth chance of not getting a 6, okay? Again, down here we've got the fair die, so it's 1 sixth and 5 sixths. Now we can work out each of those individual probabilities for the ways of getting a 6, okay? So there's this one. There's this one, and there's this one. And the probabilities are as follows. Of that first one, it's the one-third times the one-sixth, because this event consists of this and that. When you say and like that, it means you multiply the probabilities together. Okay, that and means times, multiply. This one, uh, that's one-eighteenth, yes. This one here is the one-third times the one-tenth, which is a thirtieth. And this one here is the same as the first one up here, which is one third times one sixth, which gets us an eighteenth. Therefore, guys, the probability of getting a sixth, six is this one, or this one, or this one, and when you hear that word or, that means you add the respective probabilities together, which means we've got the probability of getting a sixth. Six is one eighteenth plus one thirtieth plus one eighteenth, which, when we work it all out, I've done a lowest common multiple there of ninety, so what have we got? 5 ninetieths plus 3 ninetieths plus another 5 ninetieths looks like 13 ninetieths to me. And that won't cancel anymore because that's a prime number and it's not, 90 is not a multiple of 13. Okay? Not at all. So that's our answer in exact form. Nice and neat. Thank goodness for the tree diagram, wouldn't you say? Hooray for the tree diagram. All right, now let's have a look at this other part here. Uh, this looks just very suspiciously like a conditional uh, conditional probability thing to me, using that formula that we're supposed to use, the multiplication formula. So, um, what is the probability that if the die did show a 6, see that's a given, right? We know that it showed a 6, so that means given that the die showed a 6, that it came from the biased die. So, before we throw our hands up in horror and give up, we basically just write it out like this. We want the probability that uh, it was a biased die given that it was a 6. Now, according to the multiplication formula, which you would no doubt uh, be aware of, that means, according to that formula, that means the probability of a biased die and a 6 over the probability of a 6, all right? Now, that's probably not so bad now. Just make sure we've got our ducks in a row. Is that what they said? Uh, yes, it did it did show a 6, and we have to work out the probability that it's a biased die. Yes, that looks exactly right to me. Now, this beastly-looking thing up here, usually these are, the bark is worse than its bite. Um, and usually, uh, they work out to be very, very easy. Now, biased die and a 6, okay? Biased die and a 6. Have a look back at the tree diagram. Biased die and a 6. Aha! Uh -huh. 1 30th for sure, okay? 1 30th. And of course, the probability of a, of a 6, the denominator term, was this one over here, wasn't it? So therefore, it's 1 30th over 13 90ths, which if we then just do a bit of P and thimble and sort of sort that out and change a few things around, we've got dividing by a fraction here, so we invert it and multiply by it. The 30 will go into the 93 times, and it's looking suspiciously to me like it's 3 over 13. Oh, oh, how sweet it is. So that is the answer to that one. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay. Now this is the next part of the second question, as I call it anyway, um, with the biased die stuff. 
All right, now, you pause the video, have a go at this, and you come back when you're ready, okay? We'll see you soon. All right, now, let's have a look at this. How did you go? How did you go? Well, it looks sort of a bit yucky, doesn't it? But these things are never as bad as they look when you've had a chance to just to digest them and get a bit of inspiration. So let's read it out. In order to make the game more interesting, Sarah offers to pay $10 if a six is rolled. Otherwise, she pays nothing. Okay, first part, what is the probability of winning the $10? And secondly, how much to the nearest cent should Sarah ask for as a fee for playing the game in order for this game to be fair? Well, now that's going to take a bit of interpretation. This one looks to me here to be extremely easy. The probability of winning the $10 surely is the probability of throwing a six, isn't it? Um, so I would think that's what we've already worked out, 13 ninetieths from part B. So how did you go with that? Good on you if you got it right. Um, just have another think if you, if you stumbled a bit with that, yes? Because uh, I'm sure you'll agree that that's right. Yes? Okay, now what about part two? Hmm, we have to know what fair means, right? Well, as far as I'm concerned, fair means that in the long run, in the long run, then the expected winnings are zero for Sarah. Otherwise, she's got it a bit rigged, okay? <laughs> to, put it, um, to put it fairly bluntly, otherwise she's rigged the thing, all right? So I'm going to work this out on the basis that she doesn't win anything in the long run, okay? That, to me, is what it means to be fair, okay? So... Let uh, G dollars be Sarah's gain, if you like, and let F dollars be the playing fee. I've got to make up some, some symbols here to be able to work all this out, okay? Now, here's a table. Okay, X is the value on the die, okay? So you can have either a 6 or you can have not a 6. That's the way I've done it, all right? So let's just uh, go a little bit further. The fee in both cases is F, and we're working up towards her gain and the probability of getting that gain, all right? So the gain for Sarah in this case is F, the fee. She gains the fee. She loses the $10 if it's a 6, doesn't she? In this case, she gains the fee, and there's no loss at all because the person didn't get a 6, all right? Are you with me? All right, now the probabilities, now we better put them in. The probability that, that um, the probability of getting those gains are the probability of getting a 6 and not getting a 6, right? So it's 13 over 90 of getting a 6, as we found on the previous screen, and then the balance of probabilities, which is 77 over 90 of not getting a 6. Now, the way I would do this from now on, guys, I think you're following me, is that if we worked out the expected gain, the expected winnings or the expected gain would be zero. So how do we work that out? Yes, the expected gain would be zero in the long run. So therefore, I'm taking each of these, this one here, times its probability, plus this one here times its probability, and I'm setting them equal to zero. And as you can see, I've done that there, and I'm just going to solve this for F, because that's what we're asked for. That's what we're asked for. What fee should she charge for it to be a fair game, okay? So let's go with that. I've multiplied both sides by 90 uh, there, all right? And that's what I'm left with. Now, I'm just going to get rid of that bracket. And yes, does that look right? It does, doesn't it? Okay, so let's clean that up a bit now. It looks like 90F equals 130, and therefore F equals 130 over 90, or 13 over 9. 13 over 9 dollars, right? Which equates to a dollar 44 to the nearest cent. That's got to be what she charges for a game if she's going to come out even Stevens in the long run. In other words, not gaining herself. And I think that's the end of our little story today. Did you enjoy it? Did you have some fun? And did you get some right? Well, give yourself a gigantic pack on, a pat on the back if you did. And if you struggled a bit, that's all right. The more you practice them, the better you're going to get at them. All right? Thanks for coming to see me today, and we'll see you soon. Okay? All the best.